Hi, I'm Arif Mirza, uh, also known as Adagi from Namecult. Um, in this July 17th, 2020 episode of the Domain Social, we did get Zoom bombed a little bit. I did manage to uh, edit most of it out. Um, but going forward, if you'd like to join us, uh, please email me at info at the domain social.com. Again, info at the domain social.com. Uh, and I will email uh, you the um, access info uh, link and password for future socials. Um, also, you will notice that we had, well, we have most weeks, we have an auction. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, I did edit out um, of this week's, and for future weeks, they will be completely edited out uh, for privacy purposes and also uh, because, you know, uh, they are wholesale sales and, uh, so we'll get, keep it private. Um, there are a few that I left for this one, but going forward, there won't be any more. So, you know, if you want to join the fun, be sure to, again, email me at info at the domain social.com. I'll make sure you get the uh, access information to join us. And on that note, this again is the July 17th, uh, 2020 edition of the domain social. Thanks for watching. So on that note, welcome again to everybody and stop sharing. There we go. And Paige, you there? Did we lose Paige? So Paige he stepped away, away for a second. He's coming back. He's ah. coming. Here he comes. <laughs> uh, and Paige, you're muted. Paige, so you missed the, way, uh, the little agenda here. The first thing we're going to talk about was just because we're changing the schedule for the social next week because of the domain show. So I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds to, you know, pitch that for a couple of seconds. And well, I would, I would never pitch it. I, I was just informing other domain social members of what's going to happen differently next week. So the domain social and the domain show are going to partner up. And at the halftime break next week of the domain show, which, by the way, you can get your free tickets at the domainshow.com. Uh, there's an hour break in between the morning and the afternoon sessions. And so what we're going to do is have a social time then, uh, jointly put on by the domain show and the domain social. And then also at different times during the show, we may have an after party or even a pre-party uh, uh, helped out by the domain social. So next week, it'll just be an hour, but then we'll try to add on by having an after party that night. Friday is what we call Big Names Day. So there's a focus on one word domain names, brokering names from 100,000 up to, to millions and millions. Saturday is kind of Domainer Day, Domain Investor Day, and Thursday is more domains in general. So next Saturday, uh, you'll be watching your show, you'll be watching the different segments, and then we'll go into a social at the break time. So. That's it. I have. All right. Well, that was cool. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I just have a quick question for everybody. Um, does anybody here actually use the Zoom phone-in? Because when I send out the invites, the phone-in section is so long. Does anybody actually use it? Or if they no. are, could they tell us no. that they were on the phone right now? <laughs> yeah. All right. So that works. Use so it well. once. If you have the app on your phone, it avoids it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, one more thing. Also, in the first show, I was re listening to that, and I realized I was saying I started domaining three years ago, and I said 1996. Obviously, I meant... 2016. So that was a little thing I wanted to correct. And finally, before I get going, I'd like to, you know, I like the social be for everybody. So I would really like for people who haven't spoken up in previous weeks to start stepping in, saying a word or two. Um, you know, it gets easier as you go along. Don't be shy. Um, I'm going to try and keep an eye on the, uh, the hand up uh, feature or raise hand feature. So if, you know, if ever something you want to say and step in, press that button. I will try to peek at it. I'm, I, I know, I know Jothan, he's like amazing at this kind of stuff. Was will also step in too. Uh, so don't be shy. Please participate. Okay. So uh, any updates going on? Uh, I, if nobody wants to say anything, I will say that the domain I talked about last week, uh, the California Solar Energy one, uh, it's gone to escrow. So I upped the price too. It was a so cash payment. Gone to escrow. So I up. And um, yeah, it was cash payment. So um, I'm happy about that. I'll let you guys know when it, when it hits my, it, when it, money goes into the account. That's, it's never finished until it goes in the account. The lady's yeah. singing. Yeah. 
So that's that. Um, anybody else? Anything, um, <clears throat> Joel? Anything going on with Zesty Springs? <laughs> Oh, sorry, I was unmuted. I was uh, muted. I mean, uh, no, I'm I'm busy uh, finishing uh, the DN Academy Accelerator, and I'm not uh, taking any uh, steps to sell until I'm really done with the learning. And I think Rob is busy, so I will contact him uh, as soon as I'm done on August fourth. <laughs> but move. there's a lot of visits on the page. How's the uh, how's the um, that program going? With Mike? Oh my God, it, it's so, it's fascinating. It's so compelling. I can't believe what an idiot I was three months ago when I first crashed the social. Uh, I'm learning so much. Uh, it, it's, it's wonderful. I'm privileged to be on there and uh, I'm really taking it seriously. And the, the, even if I never do this in my life, the, the knowledge that I've acquired and the people that I've met, that is a reward already, really. It's fantastic. I think the, the best stage of domaining is that moment when you realize how little you actually know. Oh my God. <laughs> when you know what you don't know, or when you start to get an idea, that's when you start to learn for, you know, for real. Anyhow. And the more it goes, the more it's, it's like, it's sort of addictive and, uh, it's just very compelling and I'm having a lot of fun though. It's a lot of hours and, uh, I get how you are, all so busy all the time. I don't know how you do it all, really. So congratulations. I love you, and I will stop talking because I've talked too much already. <laughs> all good. So all uh, right, oh. I got my sales cowbell ready for you. You oh, tell us when we go I'm through escrow, and I'll start I'm ringing asking. it. Has anybody made a sale this week? <laughs> or recently? Three of them. Mike, three. Tell us about it. Well, you know, I don't like to talk about the exact names that I sold necessarily, but um, after Nick's sales, for the most part, might have been three or four actually. The last couple of weeks have been pretty busy. Um, yeah, after Nick's sales that are actually parked elsewhere. So, you know, I like to encourage people to list your sales on the, the MLS as it is, um, even though you have your own landing page, because that's a lot of times that's how people will buy the names. I had one that, you know, I, I went in and it said pending sale and I could not find where I had renewed it last year. I, I could not see it. It was not in my GoDaddy account. It said, you know, it was not subject for fast transfer or anything. And I just kind of started sweating it. It's like, okay, you know, it's still going to my page. So the name servers work. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has that. You, you see it pending sale, but they don't really say anything until it's like really sold. And then two days later they announced this has been sold by fast transfer. But anyway, so yeah, a couple sales this week. Yeah, I've made, I've made, uh, um, Mike, that's awesome. Um, it was a great week for me. I made nine sales this week. Only nine. Wow. Jason, congrats, <laughs> man. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> well done. I got one too. Um, I sold the five L.com. I can't release the name. Uh, how it happened. It was a $90, $90 investment. I held it, I think for 18 months, uh, came in as a lead from a uni lander, uh, was a uh, guy was in Australia. I waited till the morning, called him, made a deal, closed the sale, used Epic Astro, got paid in like a day and a half and the deal's done. Happy guy. Can you talk about ranges at least? Or oh, yeah, of course. Like, uh, what you sold, like without saying the name, at least how much more or less? Yeah, yeah, of course. Now I'll, I'll say the amount. So it was a $90 investment, sold it for $3,109. He paid the closing costs because I gave him a, it was a $3,500 name. I said, if you, if I discount it, my, my thing is I usually, I don't, I don't pay the transaction fees and you will. And it, you know, they, uh, Tony bless from Epic, man, that guy is amazing. He, he replied back 1.00 AM, 4.00 AM. I mean, it was just like, wow, like what an experience. And then everyone's in there, you know, Rob jumps in, everyone helps out and that money's in your master bucks account before you know it. I mean, you, you turn back and then you can already withdraw it. So. Great, good on uh, Epic for making that happen, and uh, it was great. So, uh, good ROI there. I see awesome. Jason's got his hand up. Is that an old hand, or are you, is that new? Oh, uh, yeah. I was just going to mention a couple sales. Um, I had my first brand bucket sale this week. Um, I've oh. had three names listed, three .io names listed for like two years, but that was all I ever had on brand bucket. And when COVID hit, I put a bunch of names on there. I currently have 150, but I hadn't had any sales, and I had two come in. 
One I'm not going to mention because I haven't gotten paid yet, but it's in escrow. But uh, the first, the one I sold was BrambleTree.com, and uh, it sold for $34.95, and I picked it up last year for $10 off of uh, Discount Drop Catch. Um, so I was really pleased with that because it was a little higher than just your normal 20-something, 17, 18, 19 something name. Uh, so I like the way, like to kick it off, you know, with a good with a good sale. Um, Jason, Jason, um, where's the decimal point in thirty four ninety five? Is it after the five? Yes. Oh, I like this story. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, definitely three thousand four hundred ninety five. <laughs> um, well done, Jason. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Wouldn't we, wouldn't be talking about a ten dollar to thirty five dollar sale. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I had another one, an after Nick sale that was uh, hiringseason.com, um, sold for $1,500, um, and I got it on a full price drop last uh, October, so I paid 60 bucks and uh, flipped it for 1500 basically. So a couple of sales, had a few other smaller sales, but those are the two notable ones that I thought bore mentioning. mentioning. Hey, what kind of hold times? have people been having on sales? I've noticed, you know, maybe I've been paying more attention now to actually picking up names because I've been doing it for 20 years and I kind of sat on my 20, didn't sit on the names, but I would be selling names that I've just had for 20 years and I didn't pay a lot of attention to delete and that type of thing. But out of the last couple dozen names I've sold, probably half of them have been a year or two hold, whereas before, you know, it would be something that I had for 15, 20 years. There's a couple that I've had for, you know, this year that I've sold that I had for 60 days, you know, uh, maybe maybe three, four months that, that I was actually able to flip from a, you know, a $10 pickup to a $1,000 sale or, or near that anyway. Yeah, my nine sales were, um, I picked them all up in the last 14 days and I sold them all. Um, I, yeah, I picked them up for eight twenty nine each and... Um, I think my total is, let me check right now, um, on those ones, I think 12,000. Very good. Outbounding. Yeah, well, that's all I need. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I actually, I'm seeing, them, I'm seeing them sell pretty fast. I've got one right now. Again, I won't mention because the sale's not complete, but I, I can't transfer it until August 18th. So it basically sold within like 20 days of me picking it up. Um, and as a question, in case anybody else has notices, I seem to recall that after Nick used to have escrow accounts and you could transfer it to them at an account and they would just finish the sale. The last few I have done that were too soon to transfer, nope, they haven't done that. And they haven't, even if I've asked, they're like, no, we, you just got to wait. Does anybody have any insight into why that is? And if I'm recalling that correctly? I wonder I if that's a great question. question. Maybe it's a buyer's choice. They don't. Maybe they don't want to have it in there. Yeah, I mean, and that that's possible. It just seemed like it was like it used to always be the escrow, and now it's it hasn't been the last few times. But it absolutely could be the buyer's choice. I agree. I think that's a great question, which is which is because we're seeing demand on. We're not going to call them flips because we would never be flippers. We are investors who happen to make money in the short term. Uh, <laughs> But I think, uh, you know, where do you list safely in those first 60 days so that you're not running into a embarrassment or not that you're not still going to get the money, but it's like, hey, if I sold the name today, I want to get the money today. I used to think in some ways Sadu was safer because they did have the escrow accounts and they'd let you push. I feel like at least if I register to GoDaddy, then if they sell it and they want the buyer to go to GoDaddy, I almost feel safer there. But then if it's a drop catch or something else, yeah, I think it's a great question um, as to whether they'd let you push. How about Dan? That would be my question to everybody. I know Dan's gotten a lot better with doing, letting you do pushes, not having to deliver to the ultimate buyer. Will they like have an account at Namebright and let you push it there and, and then get paid? So I've got some insight into the Dan um, situation. I, I do a lot of sales on Dan. And I've done a couple of purchases, um, and a lot of times I will push the push the sales um, to the Dan escrow account. Um, if it's at GoDaddy, I'm, I especially always do that. And sometimes, um, if the if the name is uh, is you know 
if, if somebody buys it before the uh, transfer lock is up, then they will take it at, uh, at name right for the drop catch names. Um, but on the, a recent purchase, um, it was at Enom and, and that I had, it was like a $50, some $50 oh. picked up and uh, the, uh, it was under transfer lock and I messaged the guys at Dan and said, hey, I see that it's at Enom. Can you just get the, the seller to transfer it to my Enom account? I'd rather have control of it, even if it's at a register I don't typically use, than right. wait for, you know, at this point it was like 30 days or 45 days. Um, and they asked the seller to push it, and they never did. And at this point, I'm seven, I'm like five days away from being able to move it with an auth code, which I have and has been approved. So um, I think that, you know, the, the situation at Dan kind of varies. Like I, I, as a buyer, I saw one where the seller wasn't as diligent about doing what, what is asked as I maybe am when I'm selling. Um, but, yeah, as far as I know, they will – everywhere I've dealt with, everywhere I've had a – uh, every registrar I've had a name at that is sold on Dan, they have had an escrow account there. So and they've allowed you to push within that 60 days. Yeah, exactly. Well, that reminds me, someone said something, someone, something someone recently said about Braden that um, someone mentioned earlier today. I oh, just kidding. I can't do it with a straight face. All right. So I, uh, I did change the settings so people can rejoin. So just keep an eye open. I'm going to let some more people in. Um, but just if you guys see anybody. Uh, and if people go to the domainsocial.com, can they, can they find out how to join directly from there? Yeah, but that's a new site. So I don't think anybody will see that aside from that. But I removed it. I put it on some socials before, but I removed it from most of them. I think it's just right. still up. How do I tell people that are texting me how to join? Give them the link. I'll post it in our, in our, in our chat there. All right, so yeah, sorry, keep going. <laughs> Thanks, Jason, for that. Appreciate it. Sure. You're welcome. All right, anybody else make any sales? It's a lot of sales for some of you guys. I got an offer. That's what the next step was. I anybody get any uh, offers coming in? <laughs> if you want to add, if I have one quick sale I can mention. All right, go for it. Then we'll go to because it, it. it has like an interesting twist to it. Well, that's why that's I want to mention want. it. Yeah. Well, there was uh, the name was I don't care. I'll mention it. Soapmate.com, and I guess some people want to start a soap business uh, given what's going on everywhere. And uh, the guy initial offer was three hundred. We finally went back and forth, back and forth, and said final deal, $2,000 paid in four installments. And I was gonna, he said deal. So I was gonna set it up. Uh, but what I did, I'm like, cause somebody had told me, you never know what the other person is saying if you don't ask. So I said, as a final extra message, I just sent him, I said, okay, cool, we have a deal. Uh, do you wanna pay the two grand one shot and get it over with? Literally, I said that. Or option B, like option two, you wanna pay it over four, uh, four months. and I was surprised. He said, you know what, let's just get it over with and pay the two grand off the bat. And if I didn't ask that question, I just set it up. Chances are I was just going to get the money in four months. And it was just a simple question that made it that I got the funds right away. Yeah. So I mean, I, I always use, well, I mean, always, but if it gets to a certain point in the negotiations, I'll always offer terms. I've, it's never happened where I've had to do it, but it's just a tactic that you use. Like, it's like, okay, well, no, I'm not going to go any cheaper, but I can help you out on this front. And then usually they want the domain right away, right? So they'll just go. No, but they, with Dan, they do get it right away in the sense that they can use it right away. And they had supposedly cash flow, more or less issues or what maybe they were trying to make it seem it was the case. Uh, yeah. But he, he didn't seem to be a big company to begin with. But at the end of the day, it was just to put the idea in their mind that even though they'll have full access and if they pay everything, they are guaranteed by a third party to get the name. So it was just a matter of maybe planting the seed and it happened to work. I guess it depends on the size of, of the business. Cause for some people they, they just, they want to have, they want to own the domain, you know, especially if it's a company. Yeah, everybody wants to own a domain, whether it's a small business or not. Could, yeah, so. But that's it's the always... matter of cash flow versus how badly you want it inside your account, even though it's guaranteed by a third party. Yeah. But, so uh, I, I uh, offer the, the uh, payment plan as a, as a last resort. To yeah. try to get cash first and then if i if, if they can't do it no. um then um or sorry if they if they want the plan i had 
uh, interest, right? So the idea is for them to pay it off sooner rather than later. Because the sooner you get the money, the better. Everybody hear me? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yep. Show me the money, yeah. Braden. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I have had people bail on plans. Um, I just I just had uh, parsley to com, parsley dot com default, but he already paid me forty grand, and he's not getting any of it back. Wow. Um, at foodtrucks.com uh, defaulted also, and I think I got about seventy five thousand on that one, and. He owes me money because he missed some payments, so I just told him, I want your website and your back end, and he's going to do it. Um, nice. So, you know, it, it, sometimes it works out, right? I mean, I, I try not to foreclose, but, um, you know, payment plans are good if they don't have the money. And a lot of times you're selling a startup, and they don't, they just don't have the cash. Um, I'm, I'm working on a deal right now for um, EZE.com, and uh, it's a startup. They have 50 grand cash, and the rest they want to give me in in equity. So we're, we're negotiating. He's actually, I think he's going to call me today. Um, so it's worth doing, but in that case, I have a clawback clause. So if, if the, if they don't um, make the payments or they go insolvent or, you know, something happens, I can take the domain back. Braden, happy birthday. Good to see you. Happy to have you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. I'm in the, Happy I'm in the car. Why I know. I got an, I got an offer and I pitched it out to um, a little group over here on icediamond.com. I got an initial offer for 1200 and change. I don't remember. Um, and my asking price was three eighty eight eighty eight. dollars um, They said initially, and I had some great advice, Braden included, and a couple others. Um, and Brandon, you could chime in with your great piece of advice. Um, usually, I think you said the initial offer is three times what they're willing to offer. So I kept stead at my 388.88 and they went all the way up to 1500. Nice. Congratulations. <clears throat> yeah, so, so my, my rule of thumb is whatever the opening offer is uh, from you know, the initial uh, unsolicited offer, typically they'll go three times that. That's, that's kind of been my uh, analysis of offers. So, so I went with Braden's advice and I countered saying, thank you for your offer. It's a great offer. My price is 388.88. And I'm still waiting to hear back. They're at 1500 But either way, I mean, um, I think it was worth mentioning because it was a great rule of thumb, Braden. I think we all appreciated it. Um, and, yeah, we'll see. I mean, hopefully I can report back and get another cowbell ring at 388.88. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to pass on their $1,500 offer. Don't be surprised if they come back and pull, pay the full price in a week if they uh, ghost. It happens. Right. And the thing is, is like we have one thing going for us that a lot of people don't like, right? It's a one of a kind asset. If they want icediamond.com and I have a buy it now and anyone could buy it, not that I'm trying to give them a hard sale and say that because I've done that in the past and it hasn't worked out well. Um, but I think it's pretty apparent um, that anyone could buy it at this price. It's available and listed in all marketplaces currently. I, I say that a lot in times when people like are trying to make an offer and it's like kind of there to, you know, kind of squeeze them a little bit. That, that helps. Just like what you're saying. Anyone can jump on and beat them to it. How would you feel if you missed out on this name that's going to help your business grow? No, but it's also a really strong offer. Usually we all get those, you know, $10, $100 offer for – so for them to come out out of the gate, you know, I think it was worth mentioning. And that's why I put it into the chat and I'm really glad Braden chimed in. Um, and it was great advice. Um, so that's why I wanted to mention it. And happy birthday again. Thank you very much. Should we start the singing now or at the end for Braden? <laughs> yeah, when we will be drunk. <laughs> At the end of happy hour, when everyone's had yeah. their drinks. <laughs>
Uh, Paige, so what was that offer you had? So uh, I got an offer on educationology.com. And uh, I know you guys have all been out there buying all the ology names because I can't buy them all by myself anymore, which let me rationalize that they were awesome. But uh, so they offered me $1,000 and my old price at Uniregistry was $24.99. But when we did the socials at the beginning, I told everybody that I dropped all my prices down. So I had it at Afternick for $699. So my choices, I feel like, are one, to let the buyer know, because it's a uniregistry offer, that the name's only six ninety nine, dollars and, and that I could sell it to them for that. Um, or I could rush to Afternick and change my price to $24.99 and offer it to them for that. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure which way to go. I think you know which way to go, Paige. You guys think? Don't give it to him. But, but I lowered my price. No, to give it to him. Though. No, I meant so. Let me clarify. I think you should give it to him at your the, the right price. For the new six ninety nine price, huh? Yeah, don't do shady stuff. Come on. I, I censor myself. Shady? Do, do now shady. I feel bad. <laughs> shady? No. Page, it, page. It, it would, it, would it update? Would deal. the price have updated an afternick based on our study? <laughs> well, now, so that brought me to the, does anyone right. know if it's better to remove it from afternick? Will it still stay up with the price for a while? Or is it better to change the price? I've had this internal well, discussion with myself. I, I can tell you, Paige, once I did change the price, not because I had an offer, I was just playing around. And I'm like, a name in my mind had gained value. So I'm like, there's no way I'm leaving it at like two, two and a half grand range. Yeah. And it didn't change on the main page. Uh, but when I went into the internal side, it had changed. And I, when I spoke to my rep, I said, what happens if I'm in the middle of a negotiation and, uh, you know, your landing pages make offers, somebody, let's say, offers you four grand or three grand and you had it lower and I want to switch it. He said, even if... It might, it's better to remove it, I guess, but even if it shows the lower price, if they try to buy it at that price, it won't go and it will take what you have in your internal profile, supposedly. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's better to remove it fully to not take that risk, but uh, it doesn't always update it right away. But in 99% of the cases, it really does update pretty quickly. Yeah, I think like the domain tools has a lot of latency when they, sh if they show it as a partner, you know, where they say we have a partner that's selling this name for so and so and and the rest of their syndication. So, hey, so anyway, hey, from someone who does a lot of outreach all the time, I think doing a little shows a lot at the end of the day. And as domainers, we don't right. get a lot of repeat business. Right. So, if you could do this for them, yeah, get them the domain. Like, our job is to get these domains into end users' hands, I will put them to the best possible use. So if you- Wow, I hate to go, I, get, I hate to be the guy saying my job is to make money for me and my family, because normally I'd be the guy you think I am. Maybe I'm not the guy you think I am. Well, I'm gonna go for, day, I'm gonna go for this one. Both. I'm gonna go for this one. We did have some names available at a buy it now in a certain marketing channel for reduced prices for a limited time. But since this is a different channel, you're coming in through the front door. I feel like I can start at my twenty four ninety nine. They start at a thousand, and we end up somewhere in the middle. And so, do you, do you know if it's an end user or a domain investor that heard this and trying to get a good price on a good name? As much as I think my names are awesome, I don't think it's a domain investor. I think it is someone who wants to build an education site with the ology extension which is the science of education how could you not want that name right so this is how our business grows getting the right names into the right end users and listen we do a lot of one-off sales like if you get someone their ideal right. exact match name yeah they're not going to need another name from you but they're going to remember it. and like this is how like he's going to say at his dinner table when we're all not wearing masks and coronavirus isn't a thing. I got this great name from this guy who invested in this name and that's how our industry grows. Interesting. Any other opinions out there? Yeah. On the well, I do have one. It's so if, if the guy had seen the price, let's say somewhere uh, else and was really coming at that price, then uh, that's a different story. But if they didn't mention that they saw it on Afternick or whatever, uh, if you sell it for 699 and if he has that discussion with other people now, 
a name like uh, Educatology or uh, yeah. exactly whichever name it was. Now it's like their parameter is, okay, so uh, I got it like less than 800 bucks. So these types of names go for sub thousand yeah. dollars. You know what I mean? Like I had a guy for one of the names, he, bet, he gave me a thousand dollar euro offer and it was, to me, it was worth way more. And his excuse is, oh, we've been uh, buying domains from a lot of people over the years. This is how much uh, this name is worth or because uh, if you sell it cheap and if they have their own ideology that, oh yeah, most domainers would cave for like 950 bucks for an average name, then that becomes the new norm. So my I big, see my the big, other side of it a bit. Yeah, my big problem here was it was so hard to update some of the other platforms when I brought my prices down. So I had another name where a guy offered uh, like 400 bucks it was a real estate name. I quoted 1500 and he came back and said, I found it elsewhere for 500 because I did have it sold for 499. So now I have a pending sale at Afternick for 499. So my feeling is if they really do find it somewhere elsewhere, great, buy it. They did their job. You know, they searched around and found the best price for the name and they got it and I'm happy and they're happy. So it's, uh, it is what it is. But anyway, I agree, I agree with you. Good to delight the customer page. Like I want Jason's Anybody point. Else? Give a good, well, give, I, a, give them a, give them a good feeling and taste in their mouth, right? So I, yeah. I hear a lot about squad help, I, and I wanted to ask if anybody has any experience working with squad help here on the call. Has anybody listed names there or, or had any sales uh, on squad help? Is uh, Ed Emery here? Brand Drip. He sold one on squad help today. It got published on Elliot's blog. Um, well, Jocelyn, it's, it's interesting that you would ask that, and uh, I hate to sound like a broken record, but uh, next Thursday at uh, 1 Eastern, you'll hear my hour-long interview with uh, DARPEN, the CEO of Squad Help, and uh, you might be able to find out more what they got going, have going on. I learned a lot from talking to him and trying to distinguish between the contest, the listing, the premium, the squad coins, the squad bucks. <laughs> the basic plus, the premium, and it, it was real helpful. So I'm doing more with them after the call I had today um, because I didn't really understand it before. Yeah, it's, it doesn't follow the same flow as I'm used to on Cedo or Dan or FD or, or the other platforms out there, which, which may actually be a good thing. I mean, it looks like they, they, their whole approach is different. So I'll, I'll, that'll be interesting. And I didn't intend for that to be an infomercial for them. I, I straight up went to go sign up an account yeah. and I couldn't figure out what I, you know, am I a buyer or a seller? Yeah, uh, and, no, it's, and so it's I hard. thought I would put it out to the pool of wisdom here. You know, uh, Andrew Allman just did an interview with him. I want to say... Oh yesterday or day before, okay. this week, very recently, if anybody wants to see that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go check that out. He always does a good deep dive with folks. Andrew yeah. really is a, a, we're really blessed to have him for our industry. I think what you'll hear is they have a lot of conversations with buyers, you know, buyers that pay for their uh, managed brand solution. And I think that we can only learn from people that have that many conversations with buyers. You know, how do they perceive domain names and things like that. So um, they're new, they're innovative, doing things differently. Yeah, I like seeing it. Mm -hmm. I like seeing that. Thank you for the discussion. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. The thing that's cool about this industry, I've been around 25 years. I learn stuff every week when I have conversations with y'all. And I, I, you know, so if I'm bringing anything to this, I'm getting just as much back from you all. And I really appreciate that. I'm actually working on a squad help portfolio right now, because I read um, yeah. the, inter the interview with Andrew. Yeah. How you doing, Jason? Um, okay. So restaurantbrands.com is something that I thought about developing for a long time. So right now I'm going to put my names on there, which they're, they're all loaded, but they're not all showing on the website. Um, because I haven't changed the servers, but um, I'm thinking about letting other people list their restaurant brands as well. Because when they sell them, they just take I think what do they say, six point five percent, maybe something like that, commission, which is the lowest in the industry. And um, they said I could possibly list other people's names as well. 
So and I'm working on that, but it, I, honestly, it hasn't been super easy putting it together, but I'm also not the most technical person. So I'm working on that's it. The, that's the white label program, right? Yes, that's correct, Braden. And for anyone who doesn't know Stu, he's a silent killer. He's a beast. <laughs> SPD, man. <laughs> SPD. In the good way, like call Stu a killer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he's a killer. <laughs> He's no, he, he he comes out he comes out of the like darkness and he's got these ten k sales. He's got he he's got great sales. He's got a great portfolio and Stu's very silent, but he he like, knows what he knows and he does it very well. I think but Michael Jackson had a song yeah. "Smooth Criminal" that that made describe it. Dude, well, where would you put side. where would you put educationology, Stu? Well. If you can, I'm the one who sold the safeology.com. We had this yeah. conversation. All my, I've raised all my ology prices. Yeah. To me, that's the kind of price that it's a little bit higher than I think it would sell on that domain name wholesale exchange. I think they price it at maybe three ninety nine. I'm guessing. I don't know if they're yeah. here. But um, are you saying are you saying that's a different uh, priceology? Come <laughs> <laughs> on. Stu and I have uh, traded yeah. ologies over the years. He's been a, he's, yeah, so we've, uh, we've traded ologies. I actually just acquired an ology. Um, showology.com was my latest ology acquisition. But, uh, but no, one think, else should. no one are, else should. No one else should buy them, right, Stu? <laughs> no, no, not at all. But um, I think that's, yeah, I, I mean, that's like a wholesale price, but if that's what, yeah. He may not. What I do, higher, man, right? just trying to make my buyers happy. Nobody's doing like name hacks with Egypt CCTLD, right? For because uh, they're dot gy. No one's doing they didn't know that existed. Hacks. Yeah, so you know, like like people put a dot ly like Bitly or or um, you know stuff with Libya's CCTLD dot ly. So Egypt is dot gy. So with all these ologies. You know, has anybody seen where somebody does something similar with Egypt CCTLD with dot .gy? Probably yeah, not. I think right? I'm, I'm, I'm stretching. Are you just sure to get it's the... uh, gy and not eg? Uh, maybe it's Guyana. There is a gy. Uh, yeah, I checked it. Egypt is eg because gy would be a little bit weird for Egypt. Yeah, there is. Uh, I'm probably getting the country wrong, but the there is a gy. It might be Guyana. Let me just check. Brayden, you're not driving. You have a chauffeur. Yes, it is Guyana. <laughs> and they have an org. So How did you pull that off, Brayden? All right, you guys. I just moved into the worldwide headquarters of uh, Site HQ. I've got a question for some guys. Uh, I'm getting more and more inquiries on my call to action domains. I want to know, like, you know, not forget the last week, but the last year. Do any of you guys have like uh, sales and you know multiple word call to action domains? Nobody. <laughs> the one I just got one for was ownthespotlight.com. I got about 20 of them. Well, let's hear about them. <laughs> I'd have to go look them up, but I know I got some like uh, bothering me or, you know, I, I, it's a bunch of them I picked up off of Dine It Up. What, what range are they, uh, are you, do you sell them in? I actually haven't sold one yet. I just have them up, uh, I have them listed all probably around the 24 oh, okay. Hour range. Okay, okay. I thought you'd, you'd sold some now. Yeah, because I, uh, I, I, I have a lot of those, and it's just uh, there's offers are starting to come in, and they're all over the place. But, I mean, you know, this is the first one I got in was initial offers 500 bucks, which is, you know, a good opening offer. But, you know, it's just where do you, where do you price them? You know? Who was it that was the, the, the originator of that? It was like Mike Birkins way back in the day. He was selling those ones like that. That really started off years ago, right? Was it him? Mike loved the in front of all his domain names. It was the, right? I believe it was him. It was like, you know, like white T-shirts. Like he started a lot of, if that was right, um, started a lot of those way back, right? 
Yeah, possibly. I mean, I just because uh, when you know when I go, th- you guys know I go through the, mist, the, the daily lists manually. So mm-hmm. like all these call to action domains that they're not, you can't find them using sort of automated, you know, systems. And so, but I find them, so I end up getting a bunch of really good ones. And like I'm starting to get, you know, as I'm putting up more uh, landers up and this and that, I'm starting to get more offers on them. And it's just, uh, you know, I've uh, get rid of glasses. I've got some offers on and I just got the domain not too long ago. Like you're on the spotlight. I was just wondering if you guys, anybody's had any success at all. Arif, um, when you, if you type those in GoDaddy, the appraisal there on the side, they show those sales. So maybe you can see similar types of sales and what they sold for. Um, with some of those kind of names, yeah, I, guess. I have this is for you.com, um, but I haven't sold it yet. But I, like I kind of look at this side. This is for you, I, this is for you.com, yeah. Like That's the one I think of for call to action that I have, yeah. What about is uh, Adam Strong still on? Maybe he has some insight on name bio, how to look those up. He's there, I don't know if he's listening. Hey, sorry, I'm hey. here. Hold on, oh, uh, you woke him up. Yeah, <laughs> Where's your video? There it is. You're always creative um, with the video. Yeah, I got a ton of call to action names, but you know, there I've sold some for big five figure prices, and uh, you know, I've had a lot of inquiries on them. And and uh, I don't know, you know, Mike was Mike was definitely one of the originators of that kind of niche, but um, you know, I think um, I don't know, they're good for marketing and advertising for sure they're not good for a brand. So like I sold, uh, I actually was going back through some old records the the other day and I sold if looks could kill. Now that's not necessarily a call to action, but um, I think I got 30 grand for it somewhere in that ballpark. Nice, Adam, good for you. I mean, yeah, that's great. All right, do you want to clarify for people who don't know what like a call to action is? Do you want to give them a couple of examples? Jason, I'll let you do that. (laughs) <laughs> I talk too much here. No, no, I mean, I mean, I haven't sold. Adam has. I mean, yeah. Like, well, going to call the action just means like, like get something or yeah, get this or here, like, like a phrase. Oh, like, a phrase. There's, there's two yeah. different ones. There's phrases and calls to action. I think call to action is just a subset of phrase names, really. So, yeah. like, would like would now let's go back to old school. Like, would like one eight hundred. Something be a call to get action. Get it now or something. Yeah. Get it now. I don't, I think, I don't think one eight hundred would. Call yeah, one eight hundred would be a vanity domain of sorts, right? A yeah. call to action is actually a domain that you are um, uh, um, trying to have initiate someone to do something, right? Like I own a, vo- a domain. Come to Vegas, right? Come to Vegas dot com. That's a call to That's action. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of them, but here in Florida, billboards are like still a thing. And um, they're all call to actions, billboards, right? Um, so that's why I wanted to like clarify the vanity and the call to action. Like, yeah, like well, I'd rather be in Vegas or what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, something yeah. like that. Oh, the, that's a phrase, not a call to action. Phrase, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I think that's more. Hey, more. I think brand. What, what happened with if looks could kill was Toyota ended up buying it and they just used it for a marketing campaign and then they just tossed it away. So, I mean, I think that's. I think that tends to be what they're used for. Um, and I think because of that, you have the potential to have some big scores. Um, but, you know, I think you really have to have something that, you know, is is kind of a an idiom or a, a, a popular term that's, you know, in the zeitgeist or whatever right now. So, I mean, that's, that, those are kind of hard to find. I saw well, drive I know. home today. For the known sentence. Sorry, Mike, I cut you off. I sold, I sold drive home today two years back for about a thousand dollars. Drive home today? Yeah. Who did that also, go to? And I sold who, who, what? Drive home today.com. And I also sold askthecandidates.com. Mike, it's hard to hear. What was the second one? Askthecandidates.com. Okay. Wow. So do you think on those names that someone types in keywords and then sees it? Or do you think they literally have to have already thought in their advertising meeting, we're going with this exact 
you know, three word combination. Um, and, and you, if you just happen to have it, it's a nice, it's a nice kiss. Or do you think that if you're related and they're searching that they see it? The marketing. Names. I think they talk about it. The marketing names. Yeah. Like Adam said, like they used it, they tossed it away. Um, it, it's your commercial. It's your pitch. But like but Adam, do you think, it. Adam, do you think they thought of it and then it became go buy it? Or yeah, do you think, think it was I like. You, they, you know, they thought about it. It could be either or, just like when Toyota had Oh, What a Feeling throughout the 80s. Right. If you look up if looks could kill, I think, and then Toyota, you probably, there were ads that were running with it. And I don't know where they were running, but, you know, they're a global company, so they could have been running in Seoul or, you know, yeah. who knows. But, yeah, here there's, I just pick, picked it up. It's uh, It won a Webby Award for it, so, like, and what a great price, thirty k. They're not, they're not using it. Um, but I mean, I mean, if you think about it, if they've got a campaign and the, and they're pushing this campaign and and they're using it in marketing material, you know, yeah. the budget the budget starts to go up. Then the necessity of having that domain goes up. But um, I guess they can buy if looks could kill dot auto now. So you know, right? <laughs> but and dot car and dot car for only for only a thousand a year. Yeah, I, I don't think they're coming up with either. They're definitely, they've got a campaign. They've, you know, they've done the Don Draper sit down in the, in the boardroom. He's made a presentation and then they're like, oh shit, we got to go buy the dot com. And, uh, and then they run into me and they go, oh shit, this guy has a dick. But, um, do, you, do you list yeah. on Afternick? I mean, are you, you're somewhere where somebody could have found it based on keyword searches, though? Because I think a lot of my names, I don't think they're searching that particular name. I think they go, oh, that's a good price for a name that's with a keyword, and it's good enough for what we're doing. No, I, I mean, think about it. It's a four-word, if looks could kill, what keyword would they be? You know, well, I'm not saying specifically that one, but, but other names. I think that a lot of them are they're searching keywords. Another one that I sold was get out of debt. I mean, everybody says get out of debt, you know, so I want to get out of debt. I want to get out of debt. That's like, it's probably the number one search term for the debt consolidation marketplace, but you can't buy debt consolidation. You can't buy uh, debt consolidator even or weird, you know, versions of that. So get out of debt is what? Get out of debt, four words. So. But it's memorable. And it's a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's sold for big bucks. But, and it's a massive, massive market. Yeah. Yep. Especially now. Yeah, no, no doubt. But I mean, I think I think any phrase name, it, it could be used as a brand. I think what Get Out of Debt went and, went and did was they created, if I remember right, they created a brand around that phrase. So it's probably not, a lead gen site, right? Yeah, well, it's, they call themselves Good. So G-O-O-D, which is the acronym for Get Out of Debt. So. so, Adam, how do you feel about, like, the call to action like versus the exact match? Like, so get out of debt as opposed to, like, um, like debtconsolidation.com or credit card consolidation.com. Like, how, what, what do you think? What's your investment style based on that? Uh, I get, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> I mean, how many people know how to spell consolidation? Yeah, I don't think you're going to find either one of these out. I mean, get out of debt definitely has a search. Um, I, I don't have any search um, tools on, on on hand right now, but um, there, you know, there's definitely a heartbeat with get out of debt. It's something that people are typing in, so it's a it's a direct match name. It's a brand. I mean, I think it's a pretty strong thing to have. I don't know necessarily that somebody's going to type in debt consolidation when they're they're broke as a joke. First of all, whoever said that they can't spell it usually, uh, that's, a, that's probably goes hand in hand with being in debt. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think, that was a joke. Yeah, no, I know. I know. But I'm, I'm joking as well. But uh, no, I, I, li I love these types of names. So, but they're, they're definitely not easy to find. I think the, yeah. the incremental benefit over even get out of debt now, which someone might say, oh, it's just as good. But I think when you have one, and it just clicks off all the things of this is the better one out of all the alternatives. I, I think you kind of just know it. You know what I mean? You know if, it, if, it's, if there's any substitution for it. And I think that um, like even out of debt, 
would be like, well, it's out of debt. You know, that's only three words and it's shorter. Uh, right. well, you just know, you just know when it's the, the right, uh, the right combination. Well, with, with the right marketing though, like there's a company here in Vegas um, that's huge called Don't Be Broke. And that's lit and um, they are really, really big. And they're, uh, they're not really, a, a, they're kind of, I guess, uh, like a payday lender, but much, much bigger than that. And um, so I think they also do debt consolidation and all that. And, and you know, that's, a, that's not really a common phrase, but they kind of made it. You know, they, they took that and they, and they owned it. They ran with it. They have billboards and they do commercials and everybody knows them. Um, so, you know, sometimes those kind of phrases can also, um, can also be brands. Like I, I was looking back at some sales. I sold and justice for all for a lot more money than any of you guys would probably guess. And uh, that's not what you would think is a common, uh, or that's not what you would think you'd build a brand around, but somebody bought it and was, you know, building a brand around it. Um, I sold better and better. I sold, I, I love these, these type of phrase names. I, I think they're great, but Adam's uh, right. They're hard to get and they're also hard to sell. So I have a bunch that, you know, they get inquiries, but they don't, they don't sell because people don't want to pay up for them. And you have to pay up to get them. And you have to wait for them to realize the idea themselves and then want it and come to you. Right, right, right. I mean, and, and, some, and you have to pay real money for them, right? They're not, they're, even when they're, uh, like, I just got good vibes only recently, and that was, I had to pay a lot of money to get that, right? And um, so... Uh, and, but somebody will, if, if I decide to sell it, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to sell it cheap. So I think those kind of brands, if somebody wants it bad enough, they will pay up. Yeah. I think some of my best sales have actually, I'm just looking through my sales. I think some of my best sales have been, I mean, my top sales are definitely like one word type things, but the ones that I think I paid the least and got, you know, the biggest spread, uh, have come from those phrase type names, not necessarily call to action, but phrase. So, I mean, again, like I said, I think a, a call to action is a phrase. Um, it's a subset of a phrase name, but I've got like a ton of names that have get something. And I think that's probably your, your strongest call to action. Uh, starting. Yeah. I think my, my word, Mike Mann posts a lot of them too. Like, get or comp. Like, he he obviously has a huge portfolio, but like you'll see his like three, four word domains and they sell for fifty K and he bought them for two hundred bucks or less. Huh. Yeah. Well how many, also how, many how many is he how many is he selling? I, I know he likes to talk about the sales of them, but then he also drops a lot of names too. So right. And I, I know everybody has their different strategies, and especially people who test things. And some of us are less um, <clears throat> competent at testing things. But um, I think that he, he does have the big sales, and I think that a lot of them he just never will sell because he's asking a, a larger price for it, and they just end up dropping. Yep. Whatever works for him, it's the math. You know, he knows how many names he has. He knows how many he has to renew. He knows how much it costs them originally and um it's it's all about math and yeah, yeah he's in a different yeah. business model than us like i mean when you own three hundred thousand names yeah and it was it was three hundred and sixty thousand. but his model is to build a portfolio and sell it off like he did with buy domains and he sold that for 75 million dollars and uh, the plan was to do it again with the domain market and if, if you do the math it was three hundred sixty thousand names uh, and he was selling like two hundred fifty thousand a month, so three million dollars a year. Do the math. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to tell you whether or not he's making money. You guys can add. Right, it's pretty borderline though. Actually, no. He said three hundred sixty thousand times yeah. ten dollars renewal. That's three point six million. You're making three million in sales. Bingo. It's a little less right, than ten right. yeah. so right. dollars. Exactly. And they're. They're not all hand rich, right? So he he's picked up names on the drop. He's he you know some names he's picked he's paid hundreds of dollars for. Oh, yeah. Right, premiums that he doesn't report. Uh, 
you know, it just, it just drops as well. So, you know, the, the, his plan is to sell the portfolio and the marketplace, uh, which has worked for him very well. Whether or not he can do it again, you know, remains to be seen. Uh, and he, he certainly knows what he's doing. He's got a great portfolio, but he dropped 50,000 names because, you know, probably they didn't have inquiries and, you know, cash flow and whatever else. I think Braden's spot on. I think the temptation can be if you're approaching a portfolio sale, well, they're going to want to pay an average price. So keep 50,000 on the bottom and multiply and times the average and, you know, the whatever. But if you're saying for the next five years, should I keep these names? Then I think that's a, I think matching your, what I took away from is matching your portfolio size to what you're selling should be the best thing to take away. You know, that's does a, your portfolio size match what you're selling? And I've had to learn the hard way. If it doesn't, then I got to let stuff go. You know, I got to let stuff go. And in, unless you're building, unless you're doing outbound, um, you got to let them go because if you're not supporting it with sales, then you just didn't, you didn't hit, you know, the, the right names, the right spot. Now, that's actually pretty interesting because like for, for, I know for myself, the math I look at is what do I sell versus my cost? But when you're building up something like that to resell later on down the road, the equity becomes a significant portion. Like, I mean, I just did the math now is 75 million divided by 360,000 domains. It's $208 per domain. So if you look at he's building his thing, he knows eventually he'll get $200 per domain on top of the sales. Well, it makes it, it changes everything, but you got to, you know, get the volume, I guess, too. I mean, even when, when like Frank sold at unit registry to, uh, to um, GoDaddy, I mean, if you looked at the portfolio, there were some excellent names there, but there was a lot of absolute, not so great names. In <laughs> Frank? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, it was how many domains did he have? I don't know how many there were, but there was a large number. But, uh, I, mean, I know when Mike Birkin sold his, he had a lot at the very tip top that were, he had a lot at the very tip top, you know, the three letter and the, and the one word and, and uh, those averages yeah, are tough. Birkin, it's tough to get an average of 200. It's tough Birkin's to also average. had, yeah, that, Birkin's also had a lot of long tail and not great yeah. names. Yeah. And, and so does Frank, right? So yeah. Frank had 250,000 names, I think. Birkin's had 88,000 names. So, um, Bergen's got a higher per name price, I think, than Frank. Average price. What was uh, the, uh, I know they released the numbers finally, but I don't remember what it was for Frank. Are we doing the auction? Yes, we are. <laughs> Your award page. Fast, eh? Wow, that was Ooh. abrupt. <laughs> that was some raw dog uh, topic switch there, man. to Dennis. You are now the owner of BlackRattlesnake.com. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job, Dennis. Thank you. All right. Is, uh, is Jason in the house? Jason Shepard? I am here. Okay, good. I saw you before then. Your name disappeared. All right. Hold on. Let me just do this. Oh, I'm getting good at this now. Bang. All right. Next up is, oops. Yeah. Ithaca, New York. Jason's and I'm just going to state I'm going to start saying a few little facts if I find them I don't have much but if they're stuff I find it's got a 4800 Estebot so go for it okay Ithaca New York um, is uh, the domain is at Epic it expires in November um, according to WMS everywhere there are 40,500 searches per month for it at a CPC of one dollar and three cents um, it is brand pa approved at $34.95, that is $3,495. The population of Ithaca, New York is 31,000. And uh, there is no reserve on this name. It can be yours for the first bid. So let's go to it. Yep. From one Jason to another, I mean, born and raised New Yorker. If you don't know Ithaca, New York, you don't know what you don't know. Way to go. Nice $50. presentation there, Jason. Nice presentation. Thank Dave you. Terman, 55. Richard Pierce, $118. Bids at 118. Next bid is going to be 119. 
Yeah, mini, 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 I should know where that is. It's just South Florida. Cornell. Cornell. Cornell is there. Cornell. Cornell, oh, okay. Cornell yeah. University. <laughs> Dave Terman. Oh. Dave, are you from Ithaca? Dave, look at that. Oh. Ithaca is the best. So hi, Dave, right now is 133 from Roman. So Dave, is it like 134 best or uh, what? <laughs> All righty. So. It's looking like Roman may have it. 133 going once. 133 going twice. 133 sold. Oh, ring the bell. Good job. I feel like I'm at NamesCon. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Next one up is uh, here we go. All right. BTC report. Sellers Deborah. And remember that BTC is short for <laughs> Bitcoin and it reminds me of I, last week, I think it was the after party or during the show, I got a really nice uh, initial four figure offer for the market report, uh, which I said no to. So I, I, I like these names. And at that note, uh, Deborah, go for it. Start your pitch. Thank you. Um, yes, you were talking in the after party about um, the fact that the can sometimes give authority um so i just happened to see this after the the after show so i just using it as an experiment but in the meantime um cryptoreport.com sold for twelve thousand on dan in two uh 2018 the blockchain.com sold for 15,000 on Namejet in 2016, and the dailytradingreport.com, these are all .coms, sold for 6,582 at Sado um, in 2010. So that's just the comps that I got, and... Um, that's it, all right. Be, be, be an authority right. on the big right. one. Nice so job, Deborah. Nice job. job. This one Thank is you. no reserve. Roman, $50. Steve Anderson, $100. I really like this to me. I got to figure out a policy whether I'm allowed to bid or not. <laughs> if you're not sure if you can bid, you can't. Well, definitely not on your own names. Oh, yeah. Whoops. What? There goes my plans. All right. High bid right now is $100 for the BTC report, the Bitcoin report. The BTC report.com, $100. Steve, anybody else? Anything higher? Paige, give right. your hand up or no, just going once. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll leave that. I'll leave that to the moderator though. Yeah. All right. Going once. <laughs> going twice. All right. Sold to Steve. Good, Good job. job. Guys. Good job, Steve. I, I like that. I like that sound. I like that buy. I like them like them both. Nice uh, name. I, Good yeah, transaction. And Paige, don't forget, you're you're you are a co-host, so like uh Especially my names, you can close them if you want. Okay. Uh, and speaking of which, I wish I prepared a little bit more on my own stuff. I everything else to do. So anybody wants to jump in, can jump in also. Here we go. Next one up is upwardsolar.com. The seller is me. And um, yeah, so solar names. I I'm just have a solar name in escrow, a three-word solar name in escrow for over 5K, uh, which will hopefully close today or Monday. Uh, well, it's closed, but I mean, I'll get the money. Um, and where does solar power come from? Above, upwards, upwardsolar.com. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Anybody else can jump in. Let the bid start and no reserve. Upward solar. Amar, 50 bucks. Upward solar. That's memorable. Upward solar. Is it to remember the point? So it sells us out. Richard, 75. Bonsu, 80. Steve Anderson, 90. And it's heating up just like solar power. 
Oh, my What's a huge market, guys. Amar, 100. Steve Anderson, 119. Using the always effective 9 EM strategy. <laughs> All right, if you need to do more outbound, sell them. I know. Sell I know. Them. Jeez, man. Where's Josh in this? Oh. Josh is amazing. Josh, like, I mean, I'm making advances on my portfolio, and Josh is always the one telling me, you got to do your work. You got to do your stuff. Right. A new uh, bidder, 125. Uh, now we're up to 130. So the next bid needs to be above 130. Yeah. So I hate trying to close things in my own auction, but I don't want it to linger too long for my own. So it's 130. I'll take over, I'll, I'll take over for this oh, okay, one. Okay, go for it. Yeah. So we're at 130. We're going to say 130 going once. Next bid needs to be above 130. 130 going twice. Sold. $130 to Steve Anderson, Upward Solar Datcom. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. And good job, guys. Thanks, Paige. Um, right. One other comment I can make here is um, for the buyers and sellers, try to connect with each other privately through the private messages here. Otherwise, at the end, I have most people's emails. So you can always contact me. Um, and yeah, so that's all I have to say about that. Next up is, oh, it's going to be, I, I, I really like this domain. Uh, Bar, you're there? Bar, are you there? I just saw you before. Yo, what's up? All right, there we go. All right, so next up is swoosh.io. Ooh. Seller's bar. I, I Hello. Love this Hello, friends. Yeah, um, so. Let me, uh, what do I got? Uh, well, it's one syllable. It's the sound the basketball makes when you, uh, swoosh it in there. Um, for a comparable, I got a Swish that I actually sold on Park.io last year for $1,000, $1,010. That's a investor level pricing. So you can get it, the close relative Swoosh taken to 44 different uh, extensions, I think, um, for no reserve. So that's all I got for that. Yep. So officially, no reserve. Get on bar. Mr. Jackpot.io, let's go. Ching. Anthony 20, Jason Shepard 35, Saro $100. I love this name. Like, I mean, like for, for IO, you want it to be like tech related, but this is like, it is. It's like, it's like swoosh, it's fast. It's like, boom, in your face. Amar 150, Saro 175. Oh, I didn't even think of the basketball either. I just liked it anyways. You can make a smiley face for the two O's in the middle for the logo. Oh, so many selling points. Amar, 250. Swoosh, Dada. Saro, 275. You just can't sell sneakers on this. Yep, yep. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, my kids make me watch uh, YouTube every once in a while, and there's a thing where uh, you can see – where things concepts go over people's heads and they say swoosh also like <laughs> like you were too dense to realize what was really going on so it's actually got beyond basketball it actually has more meaning as well Amar, like you could make fun of people who don't get it you know there are a lot of trademarks on it but uh yeah definitely don't want to do anything Adam strong related to nike can you do that? The 301 i the think i have a rule bid? coming for next one 33 what 333 from Amar. <laughs> Price Once it hits, that's when it says two hundred. We'll do it ten dollar increments. There's Lathe with three fifty. That is a talk. Typical oh, auction. Four hundred. Three hundred one. He walks out of the picture. Hey, all's fair if it's not prohibited. I think Mars with four hundred is the winning fine. bid right now. Four hundred is the highest bid. Yeah, speaking of over going over each other's heads, sometimes for me on this show, I'm working on stuff behind the scenes, and I come back and I try to get in. I'm like, I feel so lost. Jonathan, why don't you take this one home? All right. All right. So we have a high bid of 400 and it's going once. And it's 420. Oh. All right. We got 420. Funny, oh. funny bid. Funny yeah, bid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amar. 444 from oh. Amar. We're fighting against Amar's uh, stuff he finds in his couch. Note he did the 333 also. So, you know. Oh, so it's just like, did it? Yeah. I think it's just fast. I think he's just got so much money that's like, yeah, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Could have been LLL. Take home. All, All right, right, here we uh, go. We got a winning bid of 444, four, four, and it's going once. 
And it's going, oh, oh we have another bid, four, five, six. Look at this. <laughs> uh, I got a mar.io. Uh, <laughs> all right, we have a high bid of 456. Yeah. We hear a higher bid. It's going once. Mm -hmm. It's going twice. And it is 488 oh, from Mar. Oh, <laughs> right, the end. right where the hand right was going down. Sniper, man. Uh, right, we've got, <laughs> right, we've got 488 going once, going twice. <laughs> and it is sold to yeah, Mar. Don't, don't string it out. Yeah, Keep nice. the same rhythm. Yeah, we will have to find a way. Swoosh, I like that name. We will have to find a way to yeah, to listen. The, the two you guys could have booked his name on DNWE for three ninety nine. Mario could have saved eighty eight bucks. Is it still there? <laughs> no, it's not there anymore. Oh, come on, guys! He can find that in his couch. It's okay. <laughs> Congratulations, good name. Uh, wait, wait, jo Jonathan and Aris. I, I didn't mean to hijack the whole thing, but I'm saying I think we're doing this for education purposes, right? So I think it's an important point to mention. You know where. You see everyone talking about dot-com is king, dot-com is king, but you're seeing investors who have been in the industry for a long time and that are putting their money where their mouth is between new extensions, new TLDs. Um, so I think that's an important point to bring to this chat. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me just say, speak uh, uh, on that. So dot-com is king and my best names are all in .com and that's where the bulk of my portfolio value is. But I'm also seeing, uh, I'm getting a lot of sales in .ios and I've actually had some great .co sales this year too. So .com is king, but you also, like I've always said in, on these socials, you have to look where, uh, where you have good ROI. So if you can get these great names at uh, great prices, right? At wholesale prices, then then that's it, it makes sense. Optometry.co is you know, it, on a great day that could be a, a easily a five figure name, right? Uh, on a good day it's a four figure name, and um, in wholesale it's a three figure name, which is exactly what played out today. So, um, but uh, now, Amara, I was kind of prompting you because I I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. obviously .com is king, but people need to know your reasoning behind this right, and there right. are different investment strategies and there are opportunities. Right. Absolutely. I, and so I think I'll do fine with this name. Um, you know, but I, to be very clear, I still, I'm very much a dot com is king guy. I just right. also see value in some of these other extensions. And at the end of the day, it's what you can afford to hold on. If you can afford to hold on for five, 10 years, great. But some people can't afford that. Of course, you know, you're you're absolutely just... right, and and that's the thing. I, I think Jason's point is 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 well said that there are there there's a lot of opportunity still, and uh, you know a lot of you guys that are newer in the game, you, you can you guys can do very very well. You just got to be patient and and find the find the, the hidden gems. And just on Thanks that point, uh, uh, Jason, you made a good point. Like the, the whole point of the social is exactly that, is to learn. Um, and uh, auction, I don't want to necessarily interrupt things, but definitely if there's a question people have, like why did somebody buy it? Once the domain is, the auction is closed, 100%, that's what we're here for. So uh, I'm quoting uh, Josh Region there, 100%. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, definitely don't, don't hesitate to ask questions, you know, or, or comment or whatever it is. That's what we're here for. Uh, so you've got the name sold already. How much, how much would be sold it for? <laughs> I definitely don't you have, have a buyer for it. I don't have it sold, but, but I, I feel pretty good. I'll, I'll let you guys know if, it, if and when it sells. Uh, I think it's, you know, somebody will pay four figures for it for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I think somebody will pay five figures for it if I'm wait, if I'm patient. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip around here because we don't have too much time left. We're going to go a little bit over, but um, I want to make sure that everybody's that wasn't the, isn't the host at least gets their names up. And I think there's one more. I'll try and get one or two more pages in. And I think I'm up. all done, aren't I? No, you have a few more, but uh, I'm going to get skip to. Uh, you can cut Ellie's mine off. One. Hold on, Ellie, you there? Ellie's there, I see him. So yeah. next one is uh, really like one that's 
Oh, wait, I heard Ellie. I heard Ellie. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's one of the moments. So, here it is. It's uh, share screen. It's selfdistance.com. Ah. In the context of, of what's going on, so social distancing, people have to self distance. So, my distance, so five years ago, for $750. So I believe uh, social distance, so not quite long ago, but what I love about self-distance is that it means to self-distance me to self, in a sense, self-isolate, to critically think about what's going on in your life and pretty much, de uh, you know, decompress. But at the same time, if you flip it, it's also you deciding what you think is safe for you with regard to like distancing yourself from everybody else. So I think it's a great name for, you know, for, psychotherapist or for whatever it's going on right now, but it's a name that will keep going. And also as well, it's self-explanatory and also as well, call to action, selfdistance.com. Yeah, and, and on this one, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy, but there is no reserve. So get your bids in self-distance. I, I, I see it even more like in right now in the context of, of the virus, it's just huge. People need to sell, like people who go from one region to another, they have to self-distance when they get to the new place. And that's a great domain to sort of, you know, where, where do you, where do you get your orders of food? Where do you can order stuff that you need when you can't go anywhere for two weeks? I mean, it's a I nice know. presentation. Nice presentation. So uh, right now the bid is $50 from Vito. Selfdistance.com. People seem to be self-distance. Yeah. I, I would bid on this if I were not clerking. Well, I can take over as clerk. Go for it. Hey, Amar. So, <laughs> take care, Amar. It looks great on the business card. Yeah. 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 I bid right now is Jothan's 100. I gotta copy his end bidding here. <laughs> Vito, one ten. Current high is one ten. Self distance, right? This has got such a hot industry right now. Yeah, I mean, even once so, uh, social distance is gone, but self distance will always be around because there will be other situations, war, there will be crises, there will be restraining order against people. So it's just, it's a website you can even create where you can go online to see exactly those who have a uh, restraining order against them, self distance from the family or from the spouse. I, I think it's a great name. Yeah. All right, let's close this one up. Hi, Ben. I thought this one would have gone for quite a bit more. One twenty-five. I'm not, I don't know if you can comments like that, but I, I really did. In the context of, of, of what's going on, the world's going to change for a while. So, hi, bid is one twenty-five. You know what? Just to be fair to Ellie, I'm going to bid against myself. One fifty. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Really think this is worth it. So high bid right now. Jonathan, is one. I wish I had more buyers like you. I don't know. <laughs> well, I want him to have a select burger. Yeah. Oh, yummy. So high bid one fifty. So, so I mean, will you guys uh, agree that this is a uh, call to action name, self distance? Call to action. Uh, I, I think it's. Well, I think it's. That's I there. It's, it's in context. It's so strong in context. It's almost better than that because it's only two words, right? It's 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 like the it's. More than a call that it's it's more than that it's the, what it is. Should I take it as a positive or negative if people ask me to self distance? Because that's yeah, it's a great more. great question, Paige. <laughs> Paige, you know what? I officially vote Paige most huggable demeanor. <laughs> Teddy bear Paige. Uh, no, it's true, but, but like it's in the times that we're absorbing it. Like, it, is it a positive or negative? Like today, it's a positive, right? Because we're in Corona, but. In a year from now, is it going to be a negative, like, you know, back off? Well, I think that's where Ellie talked about some of the other terms and why you might want to do yeah. that for personal growth. All right, let's close this baby up. Right, Since so we have two we moderators bidding, I'm going to take over. Yeah. We've got Roman at 160. So the current bid is 160. The current bid is now 175. Yeah. The current Sorry, bid is, is 175. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to dabble a little bit, but I'm going to start doing the one, two, threes here. So it's 175 going once, and it's 175 for selfdistance.com going twice. 
and it's sold. 175 winner, Jothan, oh. selfdistance.com. Hey, oh, right Jothan. I, I like that name a lot. I like that name yeah, a lot. A, that's a really good, uh, I think you got a good one there. LAPM me so I can make sure you get paid on that. Okay. Okay, guys. So um, there are a few more names. I think the rest are all just pages in mind that we put in there to, to just in case there wouldn't be enough time. It is it is six o'clock. If you want to do one or two more, we could do that. Um, we still yeah. have a lot of people here, and there was a yeah. .io we haven't touched that uh, I. Yeah. I think uh, Paige, do you want? Is there any more of yours that you want to do? Like, I mean, I'm not going to put any pressure because obviously we've dropped some participants, and at the start we had less. So. It's up to you if you want to do any more or not. I'll, I'll push them in the next week. Okay, we'll do them next week. Okay, do you guys want to do? Oh, no. What? Unless somebody was waiting around for it. Yeah. Yep. We're good. Without saying, without saying who you are, I, I don't. I mean, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings by not doing it. Okay. So, yeah. So we'll call that the end of the auction. It was. It did go a lot longer than I thought, but it was more entertaining than I thought too. Did, did, I think they all sold. Did they all sell? Yeah, everything, everything sold. Wow. All right. Well, good job to everyone, buyers and sellers. And that's a good sign because like I, I, I felt a little bit bad at the beginning because some people got booted and I, I, I changed the settings on Zoom to allow people to rejoin afterwards, which is kind of dangerous, I think, because I'm not too sure because it would let the bad people back in. But uh, I don't think that setting sets because the meeting was already in progress. So it worked for next week. For next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everybody when you enter, put in your full names when you enter, please. And also, again, turn on your video. Yeah, turn on. Well, turn on your video. Yeah, but at least your full names. And more importantly, send me uh, an email for those of you who haven't already to info at the domain social.com. So info at the domain social.com. If you uh, did not get a direct information from me already for this week. I send them out also to the name called people, but uh, try to get me, a, I want to keep it all, all together on the uh, domain social. So uh, again, info at the domain social.com. Uh, you can follow on Twitter, the domain social. On Facebook, I have the domain social. On LinkedIn, you'll find me somehow. I don't know how that works on LinkedIn. I'm still, I'm still, I think I'm the first person in the world who got a semi grasp on Zoom before getting a semi grasp on Twitter. I'm just, this, this week in a bit has been a blitz for me. So on that note, um, I'm going to say this meeting is over. But however, what we used to do is we used to have a separate Zoom meeting for an after party. Um, you know, was, you know, several of us that stayed. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop recording right now. So goodbye, everybody watching. And sure. oh wait, before I do that, thank you to everybody who attended. And thank you to everybody who's watching. And uh, I have it up on, uh, I'm gonna, the first one is up on YouTube. Uh, the channel, is, no, there's no channel name. So just search for the domain show, the domain, sorry, the domain social. <laughs> you'll find it there amongst uh, Michael's, uh, Michael Seiger's several socials as well. And, uh, and that's it. So thanks everyone. And I'll see you next week. And it will be intermingled during the domain show. So it'll be, um, at times unknown, it'll be sort of during the lunch break and after the, show is over we'll be doing uh, socials after party after party after parties and inter parties and all these other things so at that note i'm going to stop recording thanks everybody for watching peace